Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me, even though remotely, apologies. Um, I am based in Brazil, so it was a little bit tricky to join you live. But it, for me, it's truly an honor to be able to be part of this event that connects a lot of the climate work that is happening in the Global South. And I'm going to be speaking to you about what's happening in Brazil. So once again, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, properly introducing myself, my name is Ravena Madeira. I'm a Brazilian lawyer, and I lead the Center for Climate Crime Analysis, Investigation, and Case Building Strategy to fight illegal deforestation in the Amazon. And what we do in CCCA is that we basically apply criminal investigation and analysis methodology to building cases to building cases to fight climate destructive activities. So my goal here in my, when my presentation is to basically talk from a civil society perspective, how we can join efforts to advance the global climate justice movement and, and the biggest trends that are happening in Brazil. So just to setting up a little bit on the context, what we are seeing now uh, in regards to biodiversity loss in Brazil, it's very scary. We are seeing the annual growth rate of deforestation in the Amazon um, being the highest that we've seen since 1995. So, in um, our current administration, it's also very um, um, de delicate in that sense. So, the numerous challenges that we're facing now in regards to the environmental governance have been informing a lot of our strategy. And it's also important to say that climate litigation in itself in Brazil is very new. So, the biggest case, the, 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 the most important cases that we have are as recent as last year, and they are being advanced both by civil society, but also public prosecutors, political parties, and they take a very clear um, approach of trying to use existing um, legislation to um, demonstrate the high vulnerability of those that are already have limited access to life-sustaining resources, to climate-induced risks and loss and, and damage. So this is um, what's happen what happens in Brazil. It's very it holds a lot of synergy with climate litigation that happens in other countries of the global south as well. Um, you know the biggest trends in regards to the outward looking objective of combating ongoing environmental degradation, and on a doctrinal level, the use of a rights based principle. So on that sense, I have um, wanted to comment a little bit on two uh, important cases domestically. One of them um, was brought in June last year. It's against the government and against a specific measure that relaxed uh, regulations on timber exports. And it basically facilitated legal logging, which is a very pervasive issue in the Amazon. Um, it has been for a while now, and now it's even more out of control because of the lack of monitoring. And the other case that we're, that we're following very close was brought in October last year, and it's a constitutional case against the state to reinstate anti-deforestation policies and resources that were slashed by our current administration. So this is the first time that the Supreme Court has been asked to address um, violations in our national climate change policy. So uh, it's going to bring a very important uh, precedent. And moving to the second part of my presentation, what I want to say is that we, we think that as important as, as it is to litigate government failure, it's also to hold private actors accountable for failing to adopt appropriate measures to avoid biodiversity loss and climate damage in their operations, such as those actors that are behind commodity-driven deforestation. And this is what we have um, um, tried to do when we helped suing the Brazil's biggest supermarket, um, which is controlled by a, a French group. So we, we helped uh, building this case using the French due diligence law. And it basically aims at making this company stop trading with suppliers that are involved in illegal deforestation and ecosystem destruction, but also other different types of um, and very serious types of human rights abuses that we're, that we were able to find in their supply chain, and the evidence strategy there was that we've analyzed a large set of um, documents that involve land registers, remote sensing data, and beef transport records, and we what we could see is that looking at only a small sample 
of the supply chain of the supermarket along, we could see that there was a forest loss bigger than 120,000 hectares. So it is not um, reasonable that such a big uh, corporate player does not have in place a correct and appropriate due diligence system. So this is a case that uh, it's, it's, um, it's a casino case, which is ongoing out in France. And I think it's also an example of how civil society, uh, you know, an international network of civil society can work together and bring cases to ensure that large corporate actors know that the environmental and social recklessness will not go unpunished, which I'm sure is also what civil society in Indonesia aims to do as well. So this is why events like this, which help building the legal and institutional foundations for more direct climate change litigation, um, takes place, that they're so important. So once again, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I will ask Stephen to include my email somewhere that you can find. And please feel free to reach out and hear more about our work and, and ask any questions. Thank you.